policy, opinion, point of view. This is Prime News. The sudden death of singer Amy Winehouse remains a mystery as investigators wait on the results of key lab tests. But now we're hearing a surprising theory about what could have caused her death. That's coming up next. We're still waiting for the official cause of death for singer Amy Winehouse, but her family thinks they know what killed the longtime addict. Going cold turkey. Now, Winehouse died last Saturday in her London home after infamous battles with drugs and alcohol. She went to rehab a few times, and her biggest Grammy-winning hit was even about her struggle over rehab. Let's take a listen to that song. dad released a statement emphasizing his daughter was clean and sober when she died. Mitch Winehouse said, quote, three years ago, Amy conquered her drug dependency. She was trying hard to deal with her drinking and had just completed three weeks of abstinence. So, folks, the question is, what really happened here? Did Amy Winehouse die because she shocked her system by giving up drugs and alcohol cold turkey? Well, joining me now from VH1 Celebrity Rehab, Sherry Gaba. Also, she's the author of The Law and of Sobriety. And also with me, Kim Serafin, the senior editor of In Touch Weekly. Great to have you both with us. Sherry, I'm going to start with you. Thank Is you. it possible to die by giving up alcohol, by going cold turkey? Well, with alcohol abuse, it's the most difficult one to actually withdraw from. Uh, let's say you're a heroin addict, you might get really sick, but when it comes to alcohol abuse, and if you've been drinking as heavily as she might have been, absolutely, you're, she was very small, her organs could have shut down, her kidneys, her lungs, her heart. Uh, it's very sad. She was trying to get sober, but I, unfortunately, her little body could not handle the shock to her nervous system. So, yes, absolutely. Uh, going cold turkey is very very dangerous and that's why we have you know such as a place like Soba in Malibu those are the kind of places where she would be watched there would be medical supervision and they could make sure that those things don't happen and Sherry this is not to say that she would have to be weaned off of alcohol so in rehab she would continue to be given alcohol but she would be given other medication right Exactly. Medication to help stabilize her body, to not cause that nervous system excitability where suddenly when you don't, when you don't get those medications, that's when the organs will shut down. You really need that medical supervision. Now, Kim Serafin, we have to ask the question, were there reports or any uh, discussions about whether or not Amy Winehouse had had drugs and alcohol in the recent weeks? Because her dad is saying she gave up drugs years ago. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there were reports that she had gone on a bender or she had been binging before this. But as you mentioned, her family, according to sources, does believe that what killed her is this sudden withdrawal from alcohol, that what put her into a shock was that she didn't taper herself off, that she just stopped, as you mentioned, cold turkey. And apparently that's what they truly believe. They think it was completely the opposite of these reports saying that she had gone on a bender and been buying drugs or doing drugs. So, uh, look, of course, with her history, those rumors were going to fly. We don't know. No, and we do have to wait till those toxicology reports come back from those tests that they did. Yeah, and that's going to be the big thing, Kim. And Kim, I remember maybe a couple days before she died, she was in a club performing with her goddaughter. It seems to me, and you never know, because maybe while she was performing, she was in trouble. But uh, it seems to me that was the last time people saw her in public. And it seems to me that a lot of people reported that she was pretty healthy. Exactly. Although, and, and that was the most recent one, that's the one that's caught on tape performing, singing on a stage with her goddaughter. But then you go back to June and you have that other performance that she did. She had to cancel her big tour. It was going to be her big comeback tour. And that's where she just looked totally incoherent on stage, uh, looking like she was going to fall off the stage. And of course, that's when she did stop all the performances. So you have two kind of different videos of her out there. So Sherry, we hear this and we do not know the entire picture. We don't know what might have gone on in her life on those days before. We do need that toxicology report. But when you hear about her being on stage a couple days before, singing, and then not too long before that, not doing so well, does that give you any more indication of what might have really happened here? You know, it's all speculation, but the bottom line is, you know, once you go to rehab, you need to stay in rehab for a great length of time. She needs the structure. She needs to figure out what's going on underneath the, the alcohol and the drugs. The alcohol and the drugs, like I've said over and over again, is just the symptom. It's the pain. It's the wounds. It's what's, what is she upset about? 
what's happening? You know, she's had some breakups. She's had a really rough couple of years, and there were a lot of issues, a lot of uh, things that she really needed to work on, and that's what rehab, rehab really offers a person. You know, Sherry, there's the other side of this where some people might say, well, if she's got the alcohol problem, maybe enter into a 12-step program. She was very resistant to rehab, so some might say that she might not have accepted that no matter what her condition was. Would the 12-step program have helped her? Well, you know, a lot of people that walk into my office do not believe in the 12 steps. I think the 12 steps are amazing. I think it's the treatment of choice. That's why I wrote my book, The Law of Sobriety. It gives people an opportunity to try other modalities because you're right, the 12 steps are not going to be for everybody. Uh, she might have taken to a different approach, but she needed something. She needed to work with a therapist or a recovery coach or maybe possibly live in sober living. You know, there's so many great opportunities out there that would have been there for her to help her stay sober and to really deal with all the demons that were underneath the drugs and alcohol. And Kim Serafin, did her family say anything about her mental state before she died, how she might have been doing personally? Well, you know, her father gave a very moving eulogy at her funeral. And, and look, it's just a very sad. And I think one thing that her family probably at least feels a little bit better about is that the surge in the sales of her songs. I mean, it shows what an amazing musician she was. I, obviously so troubled. Uh, it's sad, but at the same time, she really left such a great musical legacy. Uh, in, sales of her tracks have increased something like 2,000% here in the United States. So, again, while it's, it's kind of bittersweet, but that at least must have something, uh, must feel good for her family to hear. Or something like that and there really has been an outpouring of love a lot of support from a lot of her uh, fans and friends people coming to to show how much they loved her she was just someone who was taken away from us way too soon all right Sherry Kim thank you so much uh, we appreciate that a Virginia Fire Department stepped up